On September 20th, 2016, Selected Works of Hu Jintao was officially published. On the 29th, the CPC Central Committee held a study session for the selection in Beijing. These words are powerful and eloquent. With an in-depth understanding of the features of China's economic and social status in the 21st century, the CPC has made development its top priority in governance. In December 2002, then newly appointed General Secretary of the CPC Central Committee, Hu Jintao, visited Xi Baipo, a historic site redolent with Chinese revolutionary history. At Xi Baipo, Hu Jintao revisited the two musts propounded here by the late Mao Zedong in early 1949. The comrades must be taught to remain modest prudent and free from arrogance and rashness in their style of work. The comrades must be taught to preserve the style of plain living and hard struggle. We 我们必须始终谦虚谨慎，艰苦奋斗。Challenges always turn up unexpectedly. In the spring of 2003, China was struck by the SARS epidemic. At the critical moment, Hu Jintao headed to the front line of the battle against the epidemic in Guangdong. Meanwhile, the CPC Central Committee promptly dispatched an investigation team to Guangdong. On April 17th, Hu Jintao chaired a meeting of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee in Beijing. After the meeting, the State Council established the National SARS Control Headquarters. Standing Committee members led teams to epidemic-stricken provinces to implement SARS prevention and treatment campaigns. Thanks to its untiring efforts, the CPC sent a message to people all over the country and the world. Chinese people can overcome any difficulties and rise to any challenge. In June, the WHO announced the lifting of its travel advisory against Beijing and also removed the city from its list of areas with local transmission. China had effectively conquered SARS.
The victory against SARS demonstrated the advantages of China's system of socialism. However, the outbreak and spread of the epidemic also revealed a series of problems China was facing after a period of rapid economic development, such as uncoordinated development, public health underdevelopment, and incomplete emergency response mechanisms. What kind of development should China achieve? How should the country achieve it? These major questions were raised to the Chinese communists. During his inspection of SARS control in Guangdong on April 15, 2003, Hu Jintao put forward the importance of upholding a comprehensive outlook on development. At the National SARS Prevention and Control Work Conference on July 28th, he elaborated on his view as all-round development, coordinated development, and sustainable development. During his inspection in Jiangxi a month later, Hu Jintao officially used the expression for the first time that the CPC must adopt the scientific development outlook, stressing coordinated, all-round, and sustainable development. In October, in the report of the third plenary session of the 16th CPC Central Committee, Hu Jintao integrated people-oriented with comprehensive, coordinated and sustainable development, and put forward five balances, which marked the formation of the scientific outlook on development as a major strategic concept. Hu said, the scientific outlook on development is the fruit of more than two decades of reform and opening up. An important lesson drawn from our successful battle against SARS and an urgent requirement to complete the building of a moderately prosperous society in all respects. The scientific outlook on development was incorporated into the CPC constitution at the 17th CPC National Congress. The scientific outlook on development is a scientific theory that is both in keeping with Marxism-Leninism, Mao Zedong thought, Deng Xiaoping theory, and the important thought of the three represents and is in step with the times. Once a scientific theory is formed, it provides important guidance for practice. Under the guidance of the scientific outlook on development, key fields and sectors of the economy were gradually reformed. State-owned enterprises began to balance quality and speed of development and focus more on structural upgrading. China Railway Group Limited, formerly an enterprise under the Ministry of Railways, was restructured in the context of the reform of the socialist market economy. It was decoupled from the Ministry of Railways with the removal of direct management of the government and listed on both the Shanghai and Hong Kong stock exchanges in December 2007. Thereafter, it seized opportunities and made bold steps in both domestic and foreign markets quickly becoming one of the world's top 500 companies. The world's biggest projects such as the Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway and the Yangshan Deepwater Port in Shanghai were all undertaken by new state-owned enterprises like China Railway. These have grown into the backbone of China's economy. At the same time, the non-public sector of the economy started to play an increasingly important role in promoting the sound and rapid development of the economy. Its output value constitutes over a half of China's GDP, while the proportion of taxes it contributes to state coffers continuously increases. The non-public sector of the economy has become an important driving force for socialist modernization. People lie at the core of the scientific outlook on development. The 21st century ushered in profound changes, economically, socially, as well as in terms of interests, values and ideas. 
Alongside these changes came growing tensions and contradictions between man and man, man and society, and man and nature. To fully implement the scientific outlook on development, the fourth plenary session of the 16th CPC Central Committee in 2004 put forward the major strategic task of building a harmonious socialist society and identified it as an important part of enhancing the CPC's governing capacity. To build a harmonious socialist society, people must respect each other and live in harmony. The important element of social development was integrated into the overall plan for building socialism with Chinese characteristics. The four-sphere integrated plan was thus formed. Harmony between people is the core of the harmonious society envisioned by the CPC. This is Guo Mingyi, an employee of Qidashan Iron Mine of Anshan Iron and Steel Group Corporation in Liaoning Province. Over 15 years, he worked an extra two hours every day, which amounts to more than five years of working hours. Over 16 years, he donated half of his wages, a total of 120,000 yuan, to poor students and fellow workers. Over 20 years, he donated, free of charge, more than 60,000 milliliters of blood. While a few doubted his sanity, still more were inspired to dedicate themselves to the greater good. So it was that a team of over 5,000 volunteers was formed in Anshan. On July the 1st, 2011, Guo Yi was invited to Beijing to lead new party members as they proclaimed their admission oath at a gala held to celebrate the 90th founding anniversary of the CPC. Sometimes, loyalty cannot be expressed in words. Hu Jintao instructed that the CPC must publicize and promote the meritorious deeds and lofty character of Guo Mingyi, so as to provide strong spiritual support for building a harmonious socialist society. Another important aspect of promoting scientific development and social harmony is coordinating regional development. The Tibetan Plateau was the last area in China that lacked a railway. In the 1950s, the CPC Central Committee decided to build a railway to Lhasa. A Western traveler had asserted that it was impossible to build a railway to Lhasa across the Kunlun Mountains. At the turn of the century, the CPC Central Committee made new arrangements for coordinating regional development. The second phase of the Qinghai-Tibet railway project started, running from Golmud in Qinghai to Lhasa in Tibet. Many of the 100,000 construction workers risked their lives to tackle the three major challenges, namely permafrost, shortage of oxygen at high altitudes, and a vulnerable ecosystem. In the first phase of the project, the construction of the Guanjiao Tunnel alone cost the lives of 54 workers.
Guided by the scientific outlook on development, the second phase, which emphasized the people-oriented principle and technological innovation, not only met the above challenges, but also broke many records in protecting workers. During the entire phase, none died of altitude sickness, a miracle in the history of high-altitude medicine. On July the 1st, 2006, the 1,956 km Qinghai Tibet Railway opened. Tibet's history of having no access to rail links was over, fulfilling the dream of generations. Focusing on coordinating regional development, the CPC Central Committee proposed successively the Northeast Area Revitalization Plan, the Rise of Central China Plan, and so forth to complete an overall strategy for regional development. The development of West China, the revitalization of Northeast China, the rise of Central China, and the leading role of East China would jointly develop in a coordinated and cooperative fashion. On October 15, 2003, the Shenzhou 5 spacecraft achieved China's first manned spaceflight mission. On October 12, 2005, the Shenzhou 6 mission made the leap from one person one day to multi person, multi day manned spaceflight. On September 27, 2008, the Shenzhou 7 astronaut conducted China's first spacewalk. On June 18, 2012, Shenzhou 9 completed the auto rendezvous, docking with China's first space lab, Tiangong 1. Thanks to these heroic endeavors, another brilliant chapter in the realization of China's long-standing space dream had been written. Technological innovation provides the impetus for economic growth and scientific progress. Following the proposal to build an innovation-driven country in 2005, the CPC Central Committee further proposed the implementation of the innovation-driven development strategy in 2012 and increased investment in science and technology. Breakthroughs were also made in the Lunar Exploration Program and the development of supercomputers, the Three Gorges Dam Project, the South-North Water Transfer Project, the West-East Electricity Transmission Project, the West East Gas Pipeline Project, among the other major state projects, was successfully completed, demonstrating China's achievements in reform and modernization. By the early years of the 21st century, environmental constraints on China's development were becoming more and more prominent. Ecological and environmental issues became a concern for many people. In compliance with the people's request, the CPC Central Committee sped up the construction of a resource-conserving and environment-friendly society. A new era in environmental protection had begun. Located to the west of Guiyang's urban core, the clear red maple lake is ablaze with red maple leaves in its surroundings. But a dozen years ago, this drinking water source, supplying half the residents of Guiyang City, was invaded by blue-green algae, resulting in a sharp deterioration of water quality. To prevent further deterioration, China's first environmental tribunal was inaugurated near Red Maple Lake. One month later, the court targeted Guizhou Tianfeng Chemical Company, a major emitter in the Red Maple Lake area. In less than 20 days, the company had shut down all its production lines. This 
代表贵阳市民来就洪峰湖受到污染这样一个事，来提起一个公益诉讼，让某一类主体能够代表公众去提起一个公益诉讼，维护社会公共利益。Thanks to these institutional and legal guarantees, green development is no longer a castle in the air. After the 16th CPC National Congress, China formulated and revised environmental laws and was the first developing country to formulate and implement a national program to address climate change. At the 17th CPC National Congress, Hu Jintao set forth the overall goal of building a moderately prosperous society in all respects and, for the first time, put forward the requirement of building an ecological civilization. From the central government to local governments, the pursuit of green GDP began to replace the blind pursuit of GDP growth in the past. On May 12, 2008, an earthquake measuring 8 on the Richter scale struck Wenchuan in Sichuan province, killing 87,000 people and affecting more than 46.25 million people. Under the leadership of the CPC Central Committee, China quickly organized relief efforts with the fastest rescue, the largest mobilization and the greatest investment in history. After the successful relief efforts, the party and the government quickly formulated a post-disaster reconstruction plan. The three-year reconstruction was mostly completed one year ahead of schedule, demonstrating yet again the strong leadership of the CPC and the political advantages of Chinese socialism, which lies in the fact that the whole country can concentrate its strengths on major tasks. It also showed the Chinese people aren't daunted by any difficulties. On the evening of August 8, 2008, the Beijing Olympics, with the concepts of Green Olympics, High Tech Olympics and People's Olympics, was held as scheduled. In the Beijing Olympics and the subsequent Paralympics, the Chinese delegation fought hard and was ranked number one in the gold medal tallies of both events the greatest performance of the Chinese team since it first started participating in the Olympic Games. The Chinese people hosted a high standard Olympics with distinctive features, fulfilling China's century-old athletic dream and its solemn promise to the international community. Beijing Olympics, 再一次向世人招示, on May the 1st, 2010, all eyes were on China again. The 41st World Expo opened in Shanghai. It's the first registered world exposition held in a developing country. Under the theme of Better City, Better Life, the expo received exhibitors from 246 countries and international organizations and 73.08 million visitors from all over the world in 184 days. Another Chinese dream realized on the road to embracing the world. At that time, China had just weathered the global financial crisis in 2008, becoming the first economy to bounce back. In 2010, 
China surpassed Germany and Japan and became the world's second largest economy. The scientific outlook on development provides new scientific answers to the major questions of what kind of development China should achieve in a new environment and how to achieve it. It represents a new level of the CPC's understanding of the laws of socialism with Chinese characteristics. In 2012, the 18th CPC National Congress officially established the scientific outlook on development as the CPC's theoretical guidance. In the new century, the CPC had seized and made the most of the important period of strategic opportunities for China's development, promoting sound and rapid economic and social development and continually advancing the cause of Chinese socialism. Chu Fu Xi, Wei Ye Zheng Tu. 